Hello there, my name is Mark Cashman and I'm a senior product manager at Microsoft, focused on all things that we're doing with SharePoint in the collaboration space and focused on Microsoft Lists, our new app in Microsoft 365 to help you be smarter and visualize your information. Uh, I wanted to take a moment to share one of the new features that's just starting to roll out now with uh, Microsoft Lists integration with Power BI. We're excited to announce the arrival of this new guided experience to go from li your list data and make it easy to create business intelligence reports or dashboards in Power BI while maintaining the list as your source data. Uh, if you've seen the new Integrate menu, you've probably seen Power Apps and Power Automate integrations. And now we're bringing the third Power Platform integration with Power BI to give you a one-click experience to visualize your list. And that's really what I'm here to showcase. Um, there's a lot in terms of the integration with what we're doing with lists into the Power Platform. And it's been really great working with the Power BI team to use the list as the data source and then to really jump right into uh, easy to view, easy to read, and then of course even more customize how you visualize your list, especially from that dashboard. If you like dashboards to show you trends and to show you charts and to show you how things are, are going within a particular business or a project or an event, uh, it's great to do that in Power BI. So let's cut directly into demo and see what this all looks like. So I'm going to jump into my lists home and I've got one particular list that I'm going to show you uh, and that's the assets list here favorited at the top and this uses the asset manager template. If you've played with Microsoft lists you'll know this is a jump start way to just get to what you're seeing here and before we talk anything Power BI there's three things that I wanted to show you purely from just being able to visualize your list with this template, you kind of get this look and feel with rows and grids. You can always jump into the gallery view, especially with an asset manager. There's an image column if you see it on the left there. Going into the gallery view really carries forward the value of the image. And you can visualize these tiles. You can adjust them uh, and make them appear how you want. So you get the grid view, you get the gallery view, two great ways to visualize. But to then further analyze, we've always had integrations with uh, Excel. So if I were to go back to Microsoft Lists, create a new list, there's a feature here where you can create a list from Excel table data. And we've had that for a while now. I have a separate video that I'll link that you'll see down below where you can go and review how to import data from Excel, how to work with it once it's in the list, and even then out uh, export out to Excel to visualize and, and further analyze that data. So we've got a really nice integration with Excel both to bring your data in and then to help analyze it once you have it in there. What I really want to highlight is the new integration with Power BI. Go to the integrate menu. This is where I mentioned you'll see Power Apps to go into create custom forms, Power Automate to create custom flows, and with Power BI, you'll now get this link to go and visualize the list. I'm going to come back to this one that I already created, but let's see what it gets me just going directly from this list where I'm tracking a number of different uh, asset types from a couple of different manufacturers owned by a couple of different team members across my organization with a little bit of cost information as well. So I'm going to click visualize this list and it's going to take me into an instance of Power BI based on this list. And right away, I pretty much get half of what I want. I get some nice charts that are breaking apart uh, the total cost of all of the devices, what that means across all the manufacturers, the status, whether the uh, content of the devices are in use, in repair, reserved, and pretty much if you read ahead, you can get a sense. But let's put this into edit mode and start to see where it really starts to come to life. So based on this one, I'm going to just click once in and choose a different visualization style. So now I can see the status of in use, retired, in repair. I can do the same for this above and change two things. I want to just change the orientation of how I see this. And I'm interested in how many devices are, are in use, not how much it's costing me across all of those devices. So if I go in and I look at uh, the uh, price column. I actually want to, instead of visualizing the price as a sum, 
I want to see it as a count. So now you can see where it adjusts how many devices are available, one, how many are in use, four. You get the sense that you can go and, and keep going. This one's a little bit more of rows and columns, but it's a little too much information. So I'm going to go in and I just want to see what the asset type is. I don't need the image. I'd like the manufacturer, what the model is, who owns it. I don't need to see the price since I'm getting some of that above. And uh, we'll leave the status and the title in there. I can further refine this if I want by going in and actually adjusting the style. So if I wanted to, I can go in and adjust where this appears. If I want, I can go in and adjust the title headers, make them a little bit bigger. I can also go in and adjust some of the ways that there's padding so it spaces out a little bit. Increase the outline. So I essentially can just play with it, get it to where it looks like how I want it to look. I can add buttons, text box, and whatnot. The important thing, really where I want to kind of end as my second to last thing that I'll show you, is now I want to publish this dashboard, once I've configured it, back to the list. So I'm going to just title this and then publish it back to the list. That'll take a second. The report is saved. You see the title that I gave it up here now appears and when the content was last updated, refreshed in this view. So that's if I did literally just a couple of minutes. If I spend a little bit more time or if you are a little bit deeper uh, in knowledge of how to use Power BI, let me show you uh, one that I created a little bit earlier that just kind of gets through that a uh, couple of minutes of demos that you don't necessarily need to see, but you'll see the value once you take some of those steps. And voila, I go into Power BI, I should now see two. This is the one I just created. This is now the dashboard that I had set up a little bit earlier. And you'll see it's similar to what I started doing, just with a few more choices, a little bit of a different look and feel, but it's the same data visualized in Power BI exactly how I want it. So you see here I changed a little bit of the what the title said and what it means. I wanted this font to be a little bit bigger. I changed the title here, made that a little bit bigger in a different color. The use of a different types of charts, focusing just on the owner and how many assets they had here. And then down below as I started to manage really the rows and columns of data, minimizing it down to just the ones that I wanted to track and then spreading them out so they took up this whole bottom part. Um, all of these I can go in, as you would imagine with Power BI. I click into one to see reserved and everything that's associated to that then recalibrates and shows me that data. I can go in, click around, navigate, learn, uh, visualize what it is that I'm trying to get out of this data and then move on. And like that, you're able to better visualize, analyze, and really dig into all of that rich information that's in your list beyond the visualizations of list views, whether you use Excel, whether you use Power BI. There's a lot of great tools at your fingertips, and we're really excited to get this one out.